Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Yin, and today I've got a conglomerate of iPhone models once again for another episode of Chip Contest. This is a series where we take a look at all the recent processors that Apple has made and compare them against each other. So if you want to see where your device is along this hierarchy of processors, then this is going to get real interesting real quick. Because, hey, what the? Is this 2020? Yeah, it's April. 2020. So? Crap! If you ever feel alone Cause yeah, sometimes we'll feel alone In a second I'll be right there Turn around, let it rain Turn around and let it rain on me you be afraid This is the largest chip contest ever made, featuring an iPhone from each of the last six years. We have the iPhone SE, the bang up iPhone 7, the iPhone 10 in one of the 50 shades of space gray, the yellow iPhone 10R inspired by IP Freely, the I hate public speaking red iPhone 11, and the iPhone 12 Pro in slightly depressed blue. These processors all first appeared during a different year and a different device. And they also represent several other devices that have the exact same processor. The new ones introduced in the last year are highlighted in yellow. If your device is on the list, that means it's also represented by one of these contestants. As per tradition, I went back in time and got my past selves to help me make this video. Um, this is me from 2018 and me from 2017. Apparently these are the least problematic ones. Just tell us about Vegas already. I would like to know this too. Huh? I was never in Vegas. Dude, stop lying. We can tell when you do it. Unless he doesn't remember. Come on, if I went to Vegas, I would remember it. Probably. He's not in my jurisdiction. How can I apprehend him if he's not in my timeline? Contact, contact. No, no, no. All right, so the first test we're gonna do is the Geekbench 5 benchmark. This is a good indicator of how much raw processing power each device has, which affects your daily usage in terms of performance and responsiveness. Generally, the higher the score, the better. Skipping ahead, unsurprisingly, the iPhone 12 Pro finishes first, followed shortly by the iPhone 11, followed by the iPhone 7, which to me was very surprising, then the iPhone 10R. Then the iPhone SE finishes up before the iPhone X does. In case you guys didn't know, the iPhone X's A11 Bionic was the first in its series, and it had some major efficiency and power management issues, resulting in slower performance, worse battery life, and diminished thermal management. Let's go ahead and move on to our second test, the Antutu Benchmark. This is a graphics performance test. Again, just like the Geekbench test, the higher the numbers, the better. This essentially runs a series of graphic scenarios to see which device can actually process the most amount of frames. This will affect anything to do with media, such as video or gaming, and especially if you're rendering graphics, such as what this test is doing right now. I've also noticed that the iPhone SE and the iPhone 7 are not performing the same tests, likely due to the limitations of their old hardware. Man, the last time I saw this was in the very first episode of Chip Contest with the A5 and A6 chip. All right, skipping to the end, you might notice that there is a huge jump in graphics power from the A11 to the A12, and for every subsequent generation, probably because Apple figured out the efficiency issue they had with the A11 chips, therefore unlocking more of the potential of the Bionic series, which is awesome. All right, let's go ahead and see some of this processing power in actual daily usage. I'm gonna go ahead and clear out all the multitasking apps and we're just gonna launch some applications and see which one is first. So starting with the Apple Store app, it looks like we're going straight down the line this time around. Not very much variance, which is great. Next up, Best Buy, again, kind of straight down the line, except for some reason the 10R and the 7 were struggling a little bit, but nothing really that drastic of a difference. 
and one app we use all the time, the camera app, three, two, one. And it seems like the results are pretty mixed this time around, but it doesn't seem to be that much of a difference between each device. And if you can do me a huge favor by liking this video, that would be greatly appreciated. YouTube loves that. What do you think you're doing? What, what are you talking about? Where, what just happened? You're destroying the space-time continuum. What are you talking about? The space-time continuum. The fabric of reality. Since when was reality a clothing brand? I'm just trying to make a YouTube video. What the hell is a YouTube? This. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to some of the more creative applications. These things are definitely going to push your CPU and GPU way more than ordinary tasks. First things first, we have Adobe Lightroom. We're gonna be exporting the same five photos. These are all edited raw images and I will be just exporting them to each device's camera roll. Now these are a mix of a whole bunch of different images from different cameras, such as the Sony a7 III, the Canon R6, and they've all been edited with various settings. And photo exporting is actually a task that my MacBook Pro will struggle in doing. It's one of the older non-M1 MacBook Pros, but it seems like these devices are just flying through it without any trouble at all. Strangely enough, the iPhone 10 is the first one to get done, followed by the 10R, then the iPhone 12 Pro, then the iPhone 11. It seems like we're just jumping all over the place in terms of who's first. And then shortly followed by the iPhone 7. And lastly, the iPhone SE. Very interesting set of results if you ask me. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, so this next test is a combination of two different things. Number one, we're going to be airdropping some 4K HDR footage from my computer straight to each of these iPhones. You can't really see my computer screen, so I'll mark it on the screen when I send the files. For some reason, not all the devices are showing the little progress bar, but don't worry, I've synced them up to be timed properly. And it seems like that the iPhone 11 has finished first, followed shortly by the 12 Pro, then the 10R, then the 10, then the iPhone 7, and finally the iPhone SE. Now I've actually noticed something pretty interesting here. The iPhone SE does not seem to want to save this file because it is in HDR, but you can still see here that the other devices will process the files like a normal video and show it as a normal video, where on the iPhone SE, the footage is just completely blown out. The iPhone 12 Pro is the only device that'll properly display it. Now that I've darkened down my camera, you guys can kind of see the difference here. I talked more about this in my iPhone 12 review. Now the second part of this test is that we're gonna import that footage we just airdropped and export it inside of Video Shop, which is a mobile video editing program. So we're just gonna export this 4K HDR footage straight to the camera roll and see which one is first. I know you might be thinking, oh, I'm not gonna be video editing on my phone, but since a lot of the iPads are getting the same processors as these devices, I think this test is actually very important. Seems like the iPhone XR finished first and then the rest of the results just came pouring in. I mean, wow. So overall, pretty mixed results. I think it's safe to say that the A11 chip has some issues, the A10 is starting to show its age, and the A9 has just made history with iOS 15, being the first iPhone to be supported for seven years. I was so surprised to see Apple announce this. Besides, it's super interesting to see the differences between the oldest and the newest supported iPhone. With that being said, the A12 and the A13 still remain to be some of the best value chipsets, bringing us lower cost iPhones and iPads without compromising speed. So the purpose of these speed tests I do every year is just to compare these different phones so that my subscribers know what to buy if they're looking to upgrade. By the way, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. What are you doing? No, 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 I need this for time. You're not destroying my timeline no, anymore. No, 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 stop, I need this. What are you doing? What did you just do? You're not going anywhere. Oh, no! No, way! Okay. Things just got real freaky.